Matt Clark here at the new Matt Clark. How are each and every one of you doing this amazing Saturday? I'm doing great. My girl's doing great. My family's doing great. I hope each and every one of you are doing great, despite the fact that we're living in times that just aren't that great. Like, let's be honest here. They're not that great, right? If you could please hit that like button, if you could please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button to get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that'd be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of all of my videos. So what's up, what's up, what's up? This video number deuce, deuce for the day. And this video I'm gonna talk about your sentence and what happens when you get out. I don't know if I've done this video before in the past, like long before, but I'm gonna break it down a little bit differently and just kind of tell you what your sentence is gonna look like in terms of how much time you're gonna serve and what's gonna happen when you get out in a couple different circumstances. So if you're in provincial, automatically you're gonna do two thirds of your time. So if you're sentenced to three years, you're gonna do two years, you're gonna go out and there's no parole for that final year. It's just free, okay? You may be on probation, depends, probably most likely gonna be on probation. And maybe if you're a first time offender in provincial, it's possible to get a provincial bail or a provincial parole to somewhere like a treatment center or something. But most likely in most cases, you're going to do two thirds of your time. The only way you're gonna mess that up is if you lose good time by getting misconducts and getting adjudicated with some lost good time. So something like fighting, getting caught for that fighting, being the aggressor, they could adjudicate you and sentence you for that major misconduct to something like five lost days, good time, and no canteen for a month or whatever it is, they may sentence you to. But aside from that, in most cases, at around two thirds, you're gonna go home and you're gonna go free. Now, if you're in a federal circumstance, it's completely different. Your sentence is everything, whether it's nonviolent or it's violent, is everything and means everything. So typically people who are nonviolent charges, so drug dealing, even possession of a weapon. A lot of people think possession of a firearm in itself is a violent charge, but it's not. And when you get into the federal system, it's actually not that serious at all. Chances are you'll be in camp pretty quickly if that's the only charge you have. And you'll most likely get some kind of a parole at some point to a halfway house to kind of get back out into society. They don't look at it that bad as long as you don't have gun charge after gun charge after gun charge with a STG attached to it, which is safety threat group, which is like gangs, criminal organizations and stuff like that. That's the only way that that's going to be affected with a nonviolent gun charge. Now, if you're on drug, drug charges or fraud charges or anything like that, you're typically going to be parole eligible. If you behave yourself in prison, that doesn't mean you're never going to get in any kind of trouble. They kind of look at it like you're, you're frauding the system if you're just flawless throughout your time. I know a guy who was a gang member, okay, a certified gang member. And when he came in, he was really serious about his parole. He took it real serious, did all his programs and stuff like that. And when he went for parole, they told him he was manipulating the system. Parole denied because he had a certain behavior all of his life. And then all of a sudden he's in the federal system and his behavior is immaculate. They were like, come on, buddy. We don't believe this. We see right through it. You're not pulling the wool all over our eyes. Although he was serious. He wanted to get out and do better for himself. He was just tired with it. And uh, I guess that's just is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I guess that is life. Sometimes when you live a certain lifestyle, sometimes you kill your own credibility. And that just is what it is. Now. When it comes to violent offenses, parole in small sentences is probably gonna be pretty difficult. If you're doing less than like five years, you're on a violent charge and that and your behavior on the inside is not perfect. So you're not you're getting in fights. Maybe you get some dirty urinalysis in the federal system. Maybe you get caught with some contraband like some tobacco or some drugs, and your chance at parole is zero. They take that away from you. It's unless maybe you're going to go to a treatment center, but most guys that are on violent charges aren't going to be accepted into a treatment center. So you're going to end up doing your time. Now, 
If you're sentenced to a lot of time, like five years plus 10 years, double digits, 12, 15, then you're going to have a chance at parole no matter how violent your charge is. It's just the, 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 the way the system is designed, you got to cascade your way down. And if you can make it to camp and you can apply for a parole, you have a good parole plan, a good correctional plan, which you follow to the best of your ability, it's possible you'll get parole after a, a significant amount of years. Now, the system has changed drastically since when I was in the system because there was a point in time when I was uh, in my first bit and even a little bit on my second bit where you are automatically doing your stat. Now your stat is your two thirds. In Canada, in the federal system, you're still getting out at your two thirds. The only difference from the provincial system is that for your final third, you're on parole. And anytime you violate your parole, it is not a criminal charge, but you get sent back and whatever time you have left, you're gonna do two thirds of that time, get back out for the remaining third on parole again, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's why it becomes so overwhelming sometimes for people. But because of the shutting down of Kingston Penitentiary and Joyceville turning into reception and a lot of the gang issues where they can't put this guy in this jail and this guy in this jail, it limits them because of bed space. So now it's actually a lot easier than it was 10 or 15 years ago to get paroled, despite that it's actually a lot more violent in the community and in the streets now. There's a lot more gun violence, a lot more shootings and stuff like that. And despite that, people are still getting out earlier because of the bed space problems. So they don't really care if you manip manipulate the system as much, as long as your behavior is good while you're there and you don't get yourself caught up and they don't have to do a bunch of paperwork based off of who you are and the behaviors that you had inside. And you got a shot, man. Almost anybody's got a shot nowadays, despite the fact that I really had no shot. I thought I had no shot. And if I wasn't going to a treatment center personally, I wouldn't have had a shot. But because of the way the system is now, I actually got it. My bit before that, my second bit, would have never got parole even the Stonehenge, they wouldn't have cared. They would have told me to sit down. Now, what happens after you do your, say, two-thirds if you're doing your stat? Now, the only way you can get out on parole into the community basically is if you have no violent charges. If you have a violent history and you're on violent charges, you're probably going to get what's called residency, which means you are going to have to live in a halfway house and if you do not get accepted of one of the CRS halfway houses, which is like a St. John's, uh, St. Leonard's or, a, 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 you know, one of those nonprofits that runs them, which is a much more comfortable lifestyle, then you will go to a CCC halfway house like Keel Center, which is coppers. It's guards the same as it is in a prison. The rules are a lot more strict and it's way easier to get sent back. So if you're on violent convictions, just understand most likely when you get out, you're going to have a residency unless you have a rock solid plan with rock solid support and your behavior shows that you're at least moving in the right direction. But like I said, chances are you're going to get residency. Now, if you're a nonviolent offender and say you don't have family and you don't have support, and they say to you, so where are you going to go when you get out? And you can't give them an address with somebody who doesn't have a criminal record or is no, not a criminal record, sorry, who isn't actively involved in criminal activity. Then what they're going to do is they're going to stick you in a shelter until you get on your own feet and find somewhere else for you to live. And honestly, when I got out from my first pen bit, they put me in the Maxwell Megan shelter at Queen and Sherburn. And it was Hell, man. It was hell. Bed bugs. You go in the washroom at night. People are just burning rock down all night long. It's crazy, man. It's a difficult life to live. And it made me hit the pavement running. And within four days, I was out of there because I couldn't take it. I was going to lose my mind. I would have went on the run. I most likely would have went back to the pen because the living conditions there just aren't a reality. You have to be kind of crazy or really really living rock bottom to even be able to accept that. Now, in a lot of cases, guys would just snap and go back to the pen, and that's not really fair, right? It's not fair that they put you someone, 
somewhere below real living standards and you wig out and they send you back, it can be a trap. You got to hit the pavement running and get out of there. Find somewhere where you can go with somebody legitimate or at least somebody that is semi-legitimate now. If they have a criminal record from 10 years ago, it won't be a problem. That is what is going to happen. Now, you're going to be on parole. If you're a lifer, you're on parole for the rest of your life. You're on parole for the final one-third of your sentence which means you're going to have to jump through hoops. It's going to be uncomfortable. They're going to try to overwhelm you. You're going to have to report to the police station once a month where they're going to run your ID and stuff to see if you have any outstanding warrants. They're going to harass you and drive you nuts when you go there. They're going to hold you for longer than you should be held. Then you're also going to have to do parole meetings, whether you're on high supervision or, or low supervision. depends on your recidivism rate and how high risk they deem you to society. You may have to report once a week. You may have to report twice a week, depending. You're going to have to do your analysis in like 80% of cases. If you have any kind of a history of addiction with alcohol or drugs, you're going to have your analysis. It seems like a lot of lifers and stuff don't get that as long as they don't have a history of using on the inside and dirty your analysis test. But in, in most cases, you're going to have that condition. So understand that's going to be there. And another condition is going to be, do not associate with anybody actively involved in criminal activity. It is not, do not associate with anybody with a criminal record, because it doesn't matter if they have a criminal record or they do. If they're not actively involved in criminal activity, they don't have active probation or parole, you're most likely going to be able to hang out with those people as long as they've been out of trouble for a semi-substantive amount of time. If not, they may tell you no, but... At the end of the day, when you're on parole and you're living that life, you're breaking the rules all the time, right? Because you ain't going to bring your friends to the parole office to meet your parole officer and stuff. So realize that every person you spend time with, you have to know, do they have active warrants? Is there any way that there's something in that vehicle you're in that could get you arrested? If you're talking to, say you're at a corner, okay, and there's a, a working girl that's at that corner and she asks you for a light. And in the same process as trying to chop somebody up for a sale, you know what I mean? And the, the, the rope squad sees you give that person a light. That is associating with somebody actively involved in criminal activity. It doesn't matter if they have a criminal record or not. If you're in a Walmart with somebody and they steal and they get caught, you're going to jail with them. That's just how it is. I got pulled over with a homeboy. He had some drugs. I didn't, but I went to prison for association, and that is just the way life goes when you're living like that. So understand, when you come out of a sentence, you're most likely going to be under some kind of conditions, and there's some hoops you're going to have to jump through. If you could please hit that like button, that subscribe button, and that bell notification button to get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that'd be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of all of my videos. So, like I said in this, hopefully this breaks down what's going to happen to you during your sentence in terms of how much time you're going to do and what's going to happen when you get out. The best thing for you to do is to create a plan for yourself during your sentence. Find somewhere you can go when you're out if they're not going to residency you with somebody there who lives there who's proper and build yourself a plan and show them that you care about yourself and maybe, just maybe, you'll have a chance to be successful when you get out. Love each and every one of you. The new Matt Clark.